Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Gilberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Listen, uh, things are going... Uh, v- we have to remember the type of country that we are. We are a humane country. We are, I should say we have, be- we have been becoming a humane country, and we must continue on that trajectory. Well, as you will see uh, when uh, our featured guests come in today... That is far from the truth, and it is something that we have to do uh, something about. But before I get started, let me just introduce our guests. How are we doing today, Senor Daniel Cohen? Doing great. Uh, good to talk to you a little bit about this. Um, you know, it's, uh, every day is a new challenge in, uh, when, when you're in activism and when you're putting pressure on public officials to try to make change. But I feel fired up because I think that we have a very clear... Uh, message today about what's going on in Washington, D.C. and right here in our own backyard in Houston, Texas, and I'm excited to share with you. Absolutely. People. Well, what we want to first say is Daniel Cohen is the president of Indivisible Houston, one of the most active indivisible, uh, the in- indivisible groups in the country. Uh, when I say active, I mean very active. This is something that's been done here in the Houston area uh, daily. If you uh, listen to some of my shows, one of my biggest concerns was uh, the grassroots not being activated and staying activated. Well, when we have the uh, Daniel Cohen and, 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 and his cast, they are out there throughout Houston pushing things as well as all the many other groups on the left that we have out here. But anyhow, the title of the show today is Republican Cornyn and Democrat uh, to Continue in Humanity at Mexican Border. Subtitle, It is Time for Cornyn and Cuellar. Real is Cuellar, but you know, Cuellar to get serious about real immigration reform. Uh, the inhumanity and embarrassment at the border must stop. Look, folks, Daniel Cohen, president of Indivisible Houston, returns to politics done right to discuss the inhumanity at the Texas border, as well as the sham bill Republican Senator John Cornyn and Democratic Congressman Henry Coyette are trying to pass. Our guest, Daniel Cohen's article, which uh, is the blog of the week today, posted on both the Indivisible Houston website as we speak, it's already there. And EgbertoWillis.com stated the following. Cornyn's office is bringing up an old bill, the Orwellian title Humane Act, SB 2611, in the Senate form uh, from the 2013-2014 Congress as a possible solution to child separation. And actually, that bill does nothing to prevent children from separation. Rather, it pressures them into a 48-hour window in which CP- the CPB, the same institution that shot Claudia Gomez Gonzalez, would question children to determine if they need asylum before deporting them at a faster rate than ever before. Many of these guards do not speak any language other than English, and their role is not judiciary. They are neither fit nor humane enough in judgment to make asylum decisions, especially in two days, in the two days' time. An in-depth Vox report from the year the bill was introduced demonstrated that the process, uh, the process guards used to make sure children did not fall in the hands of traffickers was insufficient to the point of immoral negligence. Folks, before we get started, if you're just with us, please remember to share this program on your walls, share this program on your your page, share this program on Twitter, share this program on Tumblr, and every other social media network. This news is not getting out on the mainstream media. We must get it out. We must be a part of it. Daniel Cohen, welcome aboard. And why don't you kind of walk us through what's going on here Also, I want you to tell us why this should be important to, first of all, folks in the Houston area and throughout the entire country. 
Well, thanks, Egberto, and thanks for the opportunity to get it out. Look, right now we've seen story after story on the topic of immigration coming out, and it's like one horror after another. Family separations, uh, mass trials, uh, the, you know, that the Intercept covered uh, recently. We've had the border shooting of uh, Claudia Gomez Gonzalez, and that's not the only violence that's out there. It's in no way limited to that. So this is a real problem and an ongoing problem, and it seems like it always gets worse. Um, it would have been bad enough if we were just dealing with the standard immigration issue that we have, which is people have to be in, in the dark and people have to be in the shadows, and we're not actually solving the issue that's poisoning our social fabric. That would have been bad enough. But now we've seen widespread abuse by CBP. We've seen widespread abuse um, by ICE. We know that there are raids that are costing people, um, that are costing resources as well. Um, but we also know that the way people are being treated is completely inhumane. All the while, there's a deportation machine that is profit-driven, that is uh, lining the pockets of donor-class thugs and corporate cronies across the United States and internationally as well, groups like Geo Group, uh, Civic Corps, or Core Civic, rather. Um, it's a $3 billion industry, the private prison industrial complex that's lining the pockets of people in Congress on both sides of the aisle. A lot of the majority of the money goes to the Republican Party, but there are plenty of Democrats that are getting money uh, in the private from the private prison sector as well. Um, and this is a good what we're talking about today is actually a great example of that. Uh, it's bad for everyone in the United States. It's particularly bad um, when it comes to the state of Texas, Arizona, and other places with high immigrant populations, because we have so many people who are part of our social fabric and part of our communities who can't come out of the shadows. And worse than that, we're worried about the kinds of abuse that could take place when it comes to our siblings and resistance and our siblings in our neighborhoods. Uh, there are families of mixed status that have to deal with this on a regular basis. Our friends over at United We Dream Houston last week put on a vigil uh, related to uh, family separation. There was an event on Friday at City Hall related to family separation. It's on people's radars. We're looking at four and five news cycles in a row, thankfully, talking about this topic because of how important it really is. Now, when it comes to this particular bill, uh, it was originally written in 2013-2014 and brought forward around that time, uh, and it was indeed bipartisan. It was brought up by John Cornyn in the Senate and Henry Cuellar in uh, the House. And Henry Cuellar has a long history of um, being a hardliner on immigration, even if he has a D by his name. And Senator John Cornyn has a long history of attempting to feign compassion while actually being hardline on immigration as well. Um, we, have, we have not been able to make progress with, with his office. We've not been able to make progress with Ted Cruz's office. We've not been able to make progress with a lot of the Houston area reps. John Culberson is another good example. He is the number one and I did not stutter, the number one recipient of private prison industry donations for the 2018 cycle. He is the number one. He's taken almost $50,000 from private prisons. And there are people in his district, there are families in his district to get ripped apart. He'll say things about how he wants to do something about the, the DREAM Act and he'll want to do something for DREAMers and for undocumented families. But if you look at his lit, lit drops in West U, they say something different. So a lot of these politicians are speaking out of both sides of their faces. It's inhumane, it's un-American, it's costly, and it hurts people. And that, you know, it's happening uh, by thousands of people at a time on a weekly basis who are living in fear and being abused. Uh, the deportation machine has to end. Uh, and, that, and that's the importance of this issue. I think what is interesting is that uh, this is flying under the radar, and I think that's why they're, they, they want it purposefully to fly under the radar because... An election is coming up, and if people really start to describe exactly how things are happening, uh, this this uh, wave that we are expecting from, uh, th that we are hoping for, I should say, it's no longer an expectation, but more of a hope that we are hoping for, uh, will uh, will probably hinge on this. Because as it turns out, uh, a lot of folks don't really know that this is going on. And if you notice, even our local our local news don't cover it in the, uh, with the severity for which it should be covered. This is a serious issue. This is a hum humane. Uh, uh, in, in fact, I think one of the national or, or international organizations have, have started to sanction the United States on this. Isn't that correct? The UN indeed has uh, said that the United States should not um, should not go through family separate or should, should not allow family separation to be policy. That separating families uh, is wrong. But regardless of the U.N.'s policy, we know it's wrong. We see it firsthand. We've seen the good reporting that's been done by the free and independent press right now. Uh, particular, this is all particularly of importance for another reason, which is that a group of 
um, House reps is actually pushing for a discharge petition that would allow for a vote on a Clean Dream Act. They're five votes short of that right now. Uh, and it's, so it's taking place right now. So people who do want to weigh on a, in on this, people who do want to make an impact on this issue can do two things. One, they can call their representatives and their senators and uh, fight for families to be united and, and to end family separation. And, and that includes shooting down the Orwellian titled Humane Act, which is in no way humane whatsoever and has nothing to do with family separation. In fact, if anything, it's going to separate families further because it's going to lead to more minors being deported. And you can also push your house reps to fight for the discharge petition and, and vote in favor of it and vote in favor of a Clean Dream Act. Now, folks, if you go to the uh, IndivisibleHouston.org site, uh, we have the, the article that Daniel Cohen wrote. And under at the end of that article, it's the number of all the local politicians, uh, uh, congressmen, senators, etc., that you can go ahead and call right now. But there are other actions that, that Daniel suggests on the article. So, Daniel, why don't you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. Well, I mean, calling your reps is always good. You need to let them know that they're there. A lot of people say, well, they're not going to do anything anyway, but you have to call your reps. You have to get um, on their screen. You have to make them think through these things. This is politics. If you don't speak, they don't hear you, and that's the way that it goes. The second piece is that we have uh, an application that we constantly put calls to action in called Amplify, and the blog post explains how you can get involved with that. And the third one is you can actually attend the next Indivisible Houston meeting, which is going to be the last Sunday of this month at 2 o'clock at St. Stephen's, um, which is going to talk a little bit about fighting the deportation machine. Uh, and we are going to be relentless in that. We stand with our brothers and sisters uh, and siblings in resistance at United We Dream, Fiel, other organizations around uh, the city of Houston. Um, and getting involved in those organizations is a good thing to do as well. Now, this, uh, this program is listened to not only here in the in Houston area, in Texas, but all throughout the country. So, I mean, just as, uh, as well as, uh, as how Daniel is, uh, and Indivisible Houston is, are working on these issues, contact your local Indivisible, uh, Indivisible organization. And if they are not doing something about this, make them do something about it. Because remember, this is actually a grassroots organization made up of what you see necessary both for your local area but also nationally because you know united we fall i mean united we grow and likewise we fall in the individually so if we unite to get this done we'll get this done daniel with respect to um tell us again because there are people coming and going and for those that are just coming now please do remember to go ahead and share this on your wall share this on your tumblr share this on your instagram share this everywhere tweet it out because folks we have to help our brothers and sisters that are at the border that are being separated. Uh, it's, um, I find it amazing that uh, our evangelicals aren't marching down there at lockstep to tell these people that we don't separate families in this country. We make sure, irrespective uh, of, of, of nationality, we understand what humanity is. And what we are showing here is that a, a lack, a complete lack of humanity. Daniel. Yeah, that, so I'll, I'll kind of give the facts rundown again, and I'll go in a different order this time, just in case you heard it before, right? Um, we know that immigration has been in the news recently uh, for multiple reasons. Most recently this week, we're seeing a discharge petition uh, in the House of Representatives to fight for a Clean Dream Act. They're five votes short. So if you call your House reps, we may be able to kind of lean some toward it. Um, but regardless of whether we're able to get that done or not, uh, we've seen it in the news for... Um, for really terrible reasons as well. We've seen uh, mass trial stories coming out. We've seen family separation come out very prominently. We know that at least a dozen cases uh, of kids being handed over to human traffickers. We know that people in detention centers have been abused. We know that some of those detention centers, whether they were specifically ICE detention centers or if they were actually private prisons for other people who were serving sentences, have a long history of abuse as well. Um, we know that Jeff Merkley was unable to get into a detention center down in Brownsville Shameful. to see the condition of what was going on as well. It's very shameful, and it's, it's all in the news right now because of the horrors that we're seeing perpetrated not only by the administration, but by uh, congressional representatives. Ma the majority of them in this particular case have been Republican, but as I've been pointing out, there are plenty of Democrats that have been complicit in this as well. And in fact, one of the pinpoints and the thing that's the, the, that drove me to write the piece today was that constituents have been calling Senator John Cornyn's office to see what he'll do about ending family separation, because 
families are being ripped apart and people aren't allowed to see their kids while they're undergoing these mass trials and other human rights abuses. And he has been pushing about this lie from 2014 that claimed to be a humane immigration bill or well in title uh, of the Humane Act, um, which actually gives, um, it, it speeds up the process and decision-making process related to minors. It gives the, the border guards 48 hours to determine whether or not they're going to deport children. Uh, the border guards are in no way qualified to ask the right questions, which we know um, by through, through uh, what we have, at, at least initially, they don't necessarily speak Spanish or, or any language other than English. Uh, and we know that they're not members of the judiciary, so they're not really qualified to make that kind of, of judgment. But on top of that, they actually have a bad track record for it as well. And there were, there were actually cases where there were kids who passed the window as the policy currently dictates without bringing up certain information, such as fear about being trafficked, which makes sense. Because if you ever know a kid, whether you have kids or not, a kid is not necessarily going to tell you everything that they know within 48 hours anyway. So there might be information that's going to come out after that that is, is going to reveal to the border guard or other people that the child would be in danger if you were to deport them, that they're not necessarily going to share up front, particularly if they've been taken into custody, put in a strange place where there's not a lot of air conditioning or whatever human rights abuses might be going on. They've been separated from their parents. They're not necessarily going to give you all the information that they're supposed to give you um, in order to seek asylum and in order to avoid being separated from their family. So this policy is... I mean, the, the worst part of this policy, perhaps, is that John Cornyn's office knows, they know that this is feigned compassion. They know that they can't get away with any more than this, either because of strategy or because of direct ideology. They cannot bring a compassionate immigration reform plan to the table because their base will eat them alive. And the same thing goes, frankly, for Henry, Henry Cuellar. Right, who's a rep down in Laredo, and he relies on hardliners. He relied on them so that he could win his original primary, and he relies on them as part of his base year in, year out. He is the second highest recipient of private prison industry funds in all of Congress. Number one is John Culverson, who receives almost $50,000 a year. Cuellar receives $37,000 a year. And in the top ten is John Cornyn. And if you go back into different congressional cycles, that is a common trend. It's the same faces over and over and over again. Mostly Republican, but in no way limited to it. This is a bipartisan failure. We need a Clean Dream Act right now. And that's what you can call your reps about. And this is why it is essential, folks, all throughout this country, that what you do is you elect progressives, progressives who are not uh, wards of the prison industrial complex, who are not wards of the plutocracy. Folks, I want to just kind of welcome uh, uh, Bill Mc William Bill McLeod, who is running for judge. William Bill McLeod, remember that name. Michael Rednan is with us as well. He says, topic of discussion today isn't going to be the elections in California, Iowa, Montana, New Mexico, and New Jersey. No, the reason why it's not going to be the topic, it is something that we that it, it's going on right now. We'll probably cover some of that tomorrow, my dear friend. Welcome aboard, Henry Stuckey. Uh, jo <laughs> McLeod said, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. There you go, McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mike Cisak. Hi, my, Mike is our resident uh, uh, conservative. I haven't seen what he has to say yet. Michael Rudnan, what was the name of the bill again? Uh, could you repeat the name of the bill? Sure. It's called the Humane Act. It's from the 2013-2014 Congress. Uh, I'm going to get the bill number. I believe it was SB 2611. So it's, it's Senate Bill 2611. Um, and it's, you know, it went through actually a lot of scrutiny at the time that it came out. Uh, but it really it has nothing to do with family separation. Uh, if anything, it'll exacerbate the circumstances, but it has nothing to do with it. What we're going to start hearing, if I had to guess, is that um, Cornyn's office will say that, and, and you can mark my words on this, by the way, Cornyn's office is probably going to move toward uh, something. They'll say that they're amending the legislation for it to be effective, but it was never effective in the first place. If they were going to you know, amend a piece of legislation, then it needs to be something that doesn't go far enough in the first place, but it was the right framework. This is actually the wrong framework for it, and it was unrelated at best to, act to family separation. So that's why it's so important to call these reps out on this because there's, there's a whole complex behind all of these different things. And I'll go a step further for, your, for the, uh, the resident conservative, if I may, for a moment. We're spending billions upon billions of dollars on private prisons that violate people's constitutional rights. Billions of dollars. This is an incarceration state. Almost uh, the heavy majority of these people in TDCJ, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, heavy majority of them are for nonviolent offenses, drug-related offenses. 
heavy majority of them. You're paying so that they can sleep in conditions that are inhumane. That's it. That is, that is ridiculous. That makes no sense. And by the way, that is neither conservative nor progressive. Ed Serrano says, to add insult to injury, the children are expected to, to defend themselves before immigration court judges. Fascism unleashed. I think you got that right, Edna. Uh, you got that quite right. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that, uh, Daniel? Oh, Ed is absolutely right. You know, you look in the eyes of a kid and they don't, they don't think about, they don't have this superheated, jingoistic patriotism uh, complex that a lot of us have. And if they do, then we know where they got it from. They got it from their parents. I mean, this, the, the flat fact is that the policy is inhumane. And if you live in Houston, Texas, if you live in Texas as a whole and you actually talk to people as people instead of judging them before you get to know them, then what you'll realize is that we have a very deep beautiful, complex social fabric that we should be upholding. Alexander Tocqueville talked about this. This is not a new thing. It's not like we came up with it all of a sudden 10 years ago and some nationalists ran against it and all of a sudden everything, you know, burst into flames. Um, there, this, this entire mindset, this entire ideology is what needs to be defeated because that's what leads to the prison industrial complex. Inhumane and inco unco uh, incompassionate immigration uh, policies, ripping apart families, anti-family value policies. Now, folks, this is a call-in show. You can give us a call at 646-716-5812. We can take up to 50 calls at one time. We don't even have one. 646-716-5812. See a lot of you on Blog Talk Radio. I see a lot of you on uh, uh, 20, 30-something of you on, uh, on, on uh, Facebook Live and quite a bit on Coffee Party Network. So, folks, you Every can go ahead. Everybody's calling their reps right now, right? Yeah. Yes, everybody must be calling their reps. But folks, give us a call, 646-716-5812. If you have your piece to say, if you want to make sure that others hear, uh, hear your point of view, call in. But here's a contrast between a progressive and a conservative that's on, in, in my uh, area, right in my um, chat room right now. And here it goes. Michael Rudnan says, the profit motive shouldn't be allowed anywhere near life and death issues, not prisons, healthcare, education, etc. In such, uh, the, pr the profit motive brings nothing but human misery. And this is a response from my good conservative. Uh, if they don't want to be separated, don't cross the border. It's that easy. Now, the children, we forget that the children follows their parents, right? Do you penalize innocent children for what their parents do. It's a, I mean, uh, the, 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 the pathology I don't quite get. What say you? Well, there's a real disconnect in, in several respects. First of all, I think that exposure actually leads to an understanding. You do this all the time, Egberto, and you take you, not heat from the left, but sort of like big mm -hmm. size from the left, because you'll actually talk to conservatives probably yes, more do. than almost any progressive I've ever met. For someone... For someone as far sort of like as progressive as you are, you're, you're sort of like, I, I can't think of anybody who does that more than you do, right? Um, I like to think that the upside of that, which was something that um, Jared Yates Sexton spoke to Indivisible Houston about, was he says it creates exposure, right? right? Um, it overcomes confirmation bias, because when you don't know who someone is, if there's othering, if there's separation, then you turn people into monsters. And I think that Maybe maybe people wouldn't cop to this, but I think that when you start saying, hey, you know, if you don't want to be put into a detention center with a mass trial where you're abused and there's forced labor and there's histories of uh, physical and sexual abuse and you're, you're ripping apart families and you're sticking a kid in a pen, uh, then, you know, don't run away from uh, uh, gang violence and warfare in your home country and poverty in your own country. That's probably a sign of confirmation bias and separation. My guess is that someone who says that doesn't have a lot of individual experience with people who are going through any of these challenges. And if they do, that it's very superficial, it's very artificial, and it's very immediate. They see someone and they say, oh, I see a day, day laborer down at the same spot every single day, you know, or something like that. And so they, there's that disconnect. I guess what I would say is, I, I, you know, I could, I could beat up on somebody who says something like that. And believe me, I've done it before. I know. <laughs> um, but that's not, that's not, <laughs> but that's, but that's not what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to say. I think it's un-American to rip families apart. 
I think that it's, it go, it's counter to the history of this country to say, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. Oh, no, screw you. You crossed the border and you didn't have the right papers. I think it's un-American for us to be um, um, asking people for their paperwork to see whether or not they're citizens uh, in accordance with SB4, which in no way, by the way, is being applied to German and Irish, Scotch-Irish citizens, I don't think. Right. I mean, th- these policies paint a larger picture that is un-American uh, and goes directly against all the speeches that people quote all the time. You know, there's there's a common attitude in this country to only tell half of the story when it comes to someone like Martin Luther King, for example. Right. They only tell the half of the story where he says, I had a dream last night and we all held hands and kumbaya. They don't tell any other parts of the, the life and biography of Martin Luther King. But you know what? Let's go with that for a second. Let's say that that was the whole story. Well, what's closer to the whole story of the I Have a Dream speech than letting people actually um, be part of the American social fabric instead of having to hide in the shadows? They're already here. They're already paying taxes. They're working jobs. They're some of the best among us. Um, if you actually knew them and you actually knew their family values, you would see that you have a lot more in common with them than you do different. Uh, and the poli- you would also see that the policies themselves are what create the cruelty, right? That you, you cannot say, I'm compassionate toward them, but don't break the law. It, it doesn't compute because what you've done is you've turned it into this ugly binary and it, it perpetrates and feeds this prejudice that's leading to populist uprisings across the United States. Just today, we got news that a precinct commissioner, which is basically a precinct chair in a Virginia county in the Republican Party, one of the marchers in Charlottesville. <laughs> so we've got white supremacists becoming precinct chairs in the United States. And the only reason that that's acceptable in any way is because of the slow sterilized opening of the Overton window, which is the window of acceptable ideas in society that's taking place right now. The more that they open that window, the more that they creak and wedge that window open more and more and more, the more un-American that this becomes, right? The less compassionate it becomes, the farther we get away from a shared American dream that everybody talks about. You know, all the discussion of us sitting down and shaking hands and working together, we have to overcome this ideological hatred first, because otherwise, here's what we're going to get. Quayar and Cornyn, the right and left, quote-unquote, the Democrats and Republicans working together, and, quote, um, uh, uh, you know, Louis Black, right, the comedian Louis Black, he says the only thing worse is the, than one party or the other is when they get together. And these are the circumstances that cause him to say things like that, yes. right? Everybody's yes. clamoring for bipartisanship and working together, but when they get work together to swing a hammer with one hand each, it's wrong, it's cruel. It is actually so. I mean, what what we have here is, uh, and and Trump was, you know, Trump didn't start it. And I, I, one of the reasons I give Trump is their pass, and I give give all of this is all of this has been in the making for quite some time now. And it really started uh, sort of if, maybe before you were very political active with Ronald Reagan and all the subliminal cues that he sent. And in sending those subliminal cues, he constantly starting with Reagan. Continuing with Bush 1, Bush 2, the subliminal messages were there for people to normalize the behavior that they have now. And so, uh, so Trump, didn't, Trump couldn't have been elected 8 years ago or 12 years ago because the, the, the totality, the normalization that occurred with Obama, it was then normal to make Obama look, uh, to, to, to really hit Obama like no other president was hit before. It became normal. So when Trump came and he started doing his hidden, oh, it wasn't a shock anymore. It just got a little bit deeper. It is like putting the frog in boiling water in water, right? You bring it up slowly to a boil. He by the time he's boiling, it's too late because he's been used to the sens- sensory uh, sensory receptors already. So those are the things that we're fighting right now. And folks, the telephone number is six four six seven one six five eight one two. Again, that number is six four six seven one six five eight one two. Would love to have some of your calls. I'll go ahead and go back to the um to to the uh, to the message board to hear what you guys are talking about. But it is essential. It is essential, as Daniel said, that you go to that to go to uh, indivisiblehouston.org. It's the first news story of the day today. That is the article that he wrote. And beneath the article is how to contact, number one, how to contact your representative and do that, please. Likewise, how to use Amplify, a a, a grassroots tool that's used by Indivisible Houston. I don't know if any other ones use them as well. Uh, Do you know, Daniel, if other Indivisibles around the country uses it? 
Yeah, in fact, uh, our our friends over at Pantsu Republic uh, here in Texas use it as well, but other Indivisibles around the country use it. Uh, it was actually created by Indivisibles. So this is created by the grassroots for the grassroots. Excellent. And, and you know, folks, uh, we are going to continue to uh, push these. And what was the third thing that we wanted them to do? Come to the what meeting again? Well, the Indivisible Houston meeting, if you're in the Houston area, if you come to our next meeting on fighting the deportation machine, and we have some, some experts who can update you on state and federal policy that's going on, and even some local policy, and also show you exactly how this entire machine works within the neighborhood. The prison industrial complex is wrong. It is destroying our country. It works hand in hand with its, its sibling, the, the war on drugs, to rip families apart, to destroy lives, and to cost billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, and really trillions of dollars over time. Um, it's, it is a poison on our system. It is a cancer to our country, and it is driven by discriminatory ideology. And I'd like us to move towards something that is a better vision for the future, because right now what we're looking at is like Dark Ages-style stuff, right? I mean, it's across the entire board back to Gilded Age-style corruption, back to 1920s and 30s industries getting propped up and subsidized, even though they're, they're fragile, right? We're cutting off borders. We don't want to connect with other countries around the world. This is fear-based policy. It's fear-based ideology. There's a better vision for the way that a country should operate than this. I want to go for a little tangent. And, uh, but before, let me just say, uh, it's interesting. William, uh, William Bill McClord said, uh, you got him so amped up, he's calling right now. So uh, at least you know one person's calling. <laughs> Mike Cisak says that, uh, Daniel, it seems like you're an outlaw because he says, uh, Daniel, pushing lawlessness. Uh, and uh, <laughs> can't read that one. All right, uh, let's see. This is my favorite. Uh, let's, let's back up. But yeah, it seems like you're pushing. Um, can, can I just? Go ahead. Oh, you, well, yeah, you, I'm, I'm pushing. If. Here, here's what should be outlawed. Private prison should be outlawed. Throwing people in prison because of what they decide to do with their body should be outlawed. Abusing people should be outlawed. Um, you know, I, what I'm talking about is ending a DHS policy proposal and fighting for a Clean Dream Act and fighting for an adjustment of proposals uh, by CBP and by ICE. And, um, and so I, I think maybe uh, he misheard me. Yeah, okay. That's what I want to say. But and, and, you know, that is fine because uh, w whether he misheard you or not, there are times that civil disobedience is very, very important. I mean, especially when laws are lawless or, well, that, that sort of thing. Well, well, no, you're, 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 you're right, and I'm glad you said that. You hit it on the head because we should be defanging and defunding some of these organizations that beat people over the head. Um, what's against the law is a mass trial, generally speaking. It's completely unconstitutional to have a mass trial. It's, it's completely unconstitutional. Sexual abuse is completely unconstitutional. Uh, looking the other way while drug traffickers have their way and are able to abuse people through violent control systems is unconstitutional and illegal. We never hear anybody say anything about that, right? Whenever someone says, you sound lawless, what are they saying? They're saying, deport people. But they don't care about all the, all the other laws that are being broken internally by these agencies. They don't want to see any accountability for any of those agencies. No. Go after the activists. Go after somebody who's spending their spare time leaning on reps and making sure there's transparency and making sure there's accountability and making sure that a movement of the people ensures that there's a government of, by, and for the people. Sure, go after us. That's fine. Don't go after the donor class corporate crony thugs who have bought and sold and purchased your government for the time being and are running, this, this, running the whole government on this horrible, hate, hateful ideology prejudiced ideology is completely anti-american and runs against our social fabric i think you're pointing i think i think he's pointing his criticism at the wrong person yeah, no, interesting enough and this is where i wanted to i sort of uh, go on a quick tangent here and then return because i was sitting down in starbucks there's a one of the baristas just came back from china he's originally from china he's been in the country for six years and he went back to the town. I don't quite remember the name of the town that he that he uh, that he's from, but he went back to the town. He came back to the United States, and he said, "Oh my God, I want to go back home." He said, "Going to his town and coming here was like making a step back, and it had nothing only to do with ideology, but it also had a lot to do with infrastructure." He said, "If you ever see what my town looked like," and he then brought us before and after pictures of buildings and airports and, and, and uh, skyscrapers and all these things, new streets and all these things that are being built. 
And, uh, and as much as they have bad air because they used to burn a whole lot of coal, a lot of it which they purchased from us, they are now the leaders in building photovoltaic cells so that they can get their solar industry up to, up to snuff to get rid of these coal burning things, which means as we prop up a coal industry that will be exporting less coal and not investing in our solar energy and renewables energies, we are further falling behind. So our infrastructure is crumbling relative to the rest of the uh, world. And what's sad is in, 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 in all this rhetoric from conservatives, from Trump and all these guys, they're doing a disservice. You, you talked to me about always addressing this very left-wing liberal, and I think probably an indivisible and probably as left as they go. Uh, but I, all, I don't know that, you know, but I, I, what, what I'm saying though is, I still, <laughs> I still very much engage with the right because I think we have to come together. And I think, to put it bluntly, I think a lot of these guys are more, more progressives than they would lend themselves to be. But in so doing, the, the reasons we have to do that is because what they're doing with, with all these policies, the, the immigration policies, while we need more immigrants in this country, if we are to sustain the baby boomer generation, we have to have more immigrants to come in. Those are things that, that, that they don't tell their base. So their base remains ignorant that, one, we need these people so that we can take care of the elderly, so that we can take care of all these people that are going to be the, the, a large plurality in the country. We also need them because there are a lot of services that they provide that Americans just won't. Americans just won't do it. We need, that, we, we need them for that. So I've always said we should do one thing one day and, and, and keep America from having our immigrants for about a day or two and see how far we get. But, you know, we never get a chance because they're just a whole bunch of demagogues talking, knowing that they're not going to do anything. And in the case of what you uh, illustrated here, the only reason for having the policies of having these people come over to the United States and jailed is to pump up the jail industrial complex. Because technically speaking, if they just didn't want people to show up or come, the people wouldn't come. The people are coming to the United States because there is a market for people to come to the United States. It's a supply and demand issue. When our economy cratered, notice what happened at the border. It went to near zero, if not negative, uh, negative migration. Now that the economy has picked up, of course the immigration picked up. And you know why? Because supply and demand. And guess who's hiring? The same people the plutocracy, within the plutocracy are happy to hire the immigrants because, yes, they can, they can forget about paying some of their social security. They can forget about doing a whole lot of things they would normally have to do. So, folks, you are being snookered. Daniel. Well, you're, you're right. And, you know, it goes a step further, by the way. Um, so so here's, here's what you got right. There, is, there are asylum cases as well, right? And mm -hmm. those are, there are international laws. There are treaties that we've signed. There are all kinds of things that... Uh, there are all kinds of reasons um, and constitutional tie-ins, for that matter, that we should be addressing those. There's also a supply and demand aspect of it. But if you, what's interesting is, and, and, and really a point that I think I'd like to make, even though it's tangential to what we're discussing today, is that it costs us a lot more money to let the corporate, crony, donor-class, thuggish middleman take a slice of our life, right? We don't get to see the profit. Right? We don't get to see the, the flexibility and the choice. We don't get to see, like, we do in certain industries, right? But we don't get to see it in healthcare because sick people are not exactly a hot commodity for the most part. Right. They're only a hot commodity if you can move them off the rolls, buy them in mass, and then sell them for bulk profit. And then the insurance industry is the only one, they're the only ones who get it, right? They're the only ones who see the profits. And some cross section of doctors who are like, knife fighting with the insurance companies, and then there's an arbitration process going on between them. I'm sure you've talked about this on your show thousands of times oh, before, yes. but the point is that this applies, this applies to every single industry that deals with human beings as a commodity. Healthcare is human beings and their health. The prison industrial complex is human beings and their free time or captivity, and it's being controlled for profit. We are being sold. Our friends are being sold, and the law does not, the law, the law quite often, 
quite often punishes people for individual decisions that would affect no one besides themselves, and sometimes punishes people purely for asylum, and unconstitutionally so, by the way. All of this is unconstitutional. I'd like to go back to that claim of lawlessness for, for just a moment. All of this is unconstitutional. Ripping parents away from kids is unconstitutional. Not giving someone a due trial is unconstitutional. The backdoor cop-out that somebody wasn't a citizen and therefore has not endowed the rights of the Constitution is ridiculous. Do you want someone getting off of plane and all of a sudden they can't have free speech and free assembly? I'm sure that these people would be fine with them owning a gun as long as they have a license. Should we just be uh, uh, cruelly and unusually punishing people because they're from another country? Egberto, you're from Panama. I'm glad that when you got here, man, that you had some rights. I'm glad someone couldn't just drag you away. That seems really cruel and un-American to me. It's a, it's a very binary, black and white way of looking at these things. People that want to work together to come up with a solution to like move the country forward need to stop thinking in terms of me good, you bad, me American, they're the enemy. That's not going to get us anywhere. It's not. And that is why we engage and that is why we talk some of us more so than others some of us have to do the work that you're doing daniel you are you you are not only a hell of a cheerleader but a hell of a fact-based cheerleader is what i like to say because you know we have two types of we have two types of folks out there those that are just spewing most of them on the right of course and those that actually know what they're talking about and it is our job, and you know we have a, quite a few conservative listeners. I mean, I, I even get the the letters from the conservative listeners that enjoy that. W- w- you know, we're not trying to let anybody look stupid. What we're trying to do is informed as best we can. And I think you are doing a great job with uh, with uh, Indivisible and the team. Uh, call out some of our our team uh, members. I'd like I like to get people a recognition. Call out some of our team members. Sure. So shouts out to our action chair, Nisha Randall, uh, you know, organizer of many, many a marches. Um, and uh, also uh, with she's also with PSR in Houston Rising um, and has, has done amazing work. One of the great unifiers of the Houston uh, scene and one of the great, a- great uh, uh, reactivated or new activated activists in all of this as well. Pranav Joshi, our finance uh, chair, um, who is is you know we we have uh we spar sometimes in terms of our policy but a lot of times we land on the same page uh particularly when it comes to this because if you're pro family values and you recognize what this is then you should be against it and and we've we've railed against family separation ourselves the great Egberto willies of course comes around i want to give a shout out as well to philip weimer uh, who's, uh run runs ops with us uh it would make sense as well to give a shout out to the uh, the weekly senatorial protests slash office visitors that are around, uh, including Neil Aquino and Brent Zol- Sullivan, who both uh, are at John Cornyn's office with 12 or 14 other resistors every single Tuesday at 1145 at 5300 Memorial, as well as Greg Broyles, Pat Garris, and the crew down at Ted Cruz's office at that same time, 1145 on Tuesdays at 808 Travis. Uh, for the record, John Cornyn's office um, uh, does take up people four at a time, and it'll take everyone up until you run out of people. Ted Cruz's office takes up four people because apparently the representative of the representative want a representative <laughs> for the people downstairs to talk to them because that's how American government works, according to Ted Cruz. I want to also give a shout out to Karen Horn, who <laughs> is our newsletter. Make sure that that newsletter goes out for Indivisible every single week so shout out to karen horn and of course el presidente here uh presidente daniel uh coin you can see why uh he makes a damn good president for uh for indivisible because he keep things uh cooking out here keep you, all of you guys that he mentioned keep up doing the good job because you are you are that resistance but it's more than the resistance because remember we cannot get ahead with just the resistance we have to have policies we have to have things that we support and we have to make sure to move towards supporting folks that are going to move us forward not just resist donald trump because donald trump in the long run will be gone and we'll, you'll, you'll have a replacement, whether Democratic or Republican. And you know what? Unless we keep the fire under these folks, we're going to be right back where we started. What we're looking for now, folks, is a permanent solution, is a permanent progress, is permanent progressivity, because that is what Americans say they want. This isn't what Daniel Cohen wants. This isn't what Egberto Willis wants. You ask Americans what they want. 
and what they want, whether they call it that or not, or the values that we preach as progressives. That is what Americans are asking for. You want to elaborate some on that, Daniel? Yeah, an overwhelming majority of Americans favor a Clean Dream Act. An overwhelming majority of Americans favor Medicare for All. And an overwhelming majority of Americans are in favor of public education. We've seen some some erasure of some of that, a little bit of like chipping away at that because of misinformation that's been perpetrated by the Texas Education Agency and the Betsy DeVos regime in Washington, D.C. But for the most part, people tend to agree on these things. Most people do want us to have a safe country and they'll say a strong military, but when you really get, uh, dig a little bit deeper, what they don't want is for us to be in endless wars. So there are some definite crossover points that we can, we can, we can find here for most um, Americans. And really, the people who don't do a good job of shepherding that through are the politicians. Some dump gasoline on the fire, and some of them just don't see uh, the difference between day and night on some of these issues. But we, the people, can do a better job. Government should be transparent. Your rep should be listening to you. They should be having town halls. You should be able to weigh in with them easily. They should not put a flunky on the phone to answer your questions and say that they're just going to pass things along. There should be people who are engaging in dialogue on a regular basis who are actually doing casework, not photo op work, not going to an unaffected, wealthy community in West Houston to discuss Harvey, but actually getting into Lakewood and these other areas that were affected, finding real solutions for in infrastructure, finding real solutions for education. I mean, these are the things that are going to build out a future that's going to, going to make for an actual strong country. For everyone who's waving an American flag, if you think that the American flag uh, is a representative of a, a, a burgeoning democracy where people um, uh, can grow and where families can continue to have a better life and continue to grow together, invest in education. Invest in, in, in infrastructure. Invest in uh, health care coverage. Make sure that we're all in one single pool so that these crony thugs and the insurance companies can't blood wash you out of the market. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's going to lead to a healthier nation. This is the kind of thing, this is the thing, kind of thing that puts control back in your hands. Not a thousand different seats and mud boards with meetings that are called on 72 hours notice and nobody knows where they are or how you can get to them. No, I want my politician whose desk is not more than a few miles from me to be able to talk to me. And I want it to happen on a regular basis. And I don't want to hear flack and propaganda coming out through press releases that are barely read by the members of his office. And, and most of whom, by the way, are interns making less than $15 an hour who don't take pride in their work. I mean, these are things that directly affect people. If you want to see people getting involved in volunteerism, give them a living wage. Otherwise, they have to spend all their time working. This is the kind of stuff that holds up a healthy infrastructure and creates healthy American families. Working families know it. That's why the tax bill is unpopular, because it was a wealthy giveaway. It was a giveaway to corporate donors and, as you would call it, Egberto, the plutocracy. That's the kind of country that I want to see. If there's a fragile industry that's going to fall apart every minute, then protect us from it. Don't give them the golden goose. Don't pick my pocket and give my savings to some thug on Wall Street or Washington, D.C., I don't think any of the listeners of your show would be in favor of that. It's just that they rail against it a little bit differently. Your conservative listeners will say, ah, oh, government's getting me again. And your, your progressive listeners will say these corporate, the, you know, these, this, the plutocracy and the monopoly is, is taking out our knees. When in fact, what's really happening is donor class thugs in government are shaking hands with donors and CEOs and thuggish lobbyists who have no skin in the game whatsoever to create a stranglehold on the people. Working families and working people are the heart and soul of the United States. We are the ones, we the people, it's right there in all the documentation. Swear to God, you can go look and it's still there. It's practically written in stone, right? We're the ones that the country is for. We the people control our government. The politicians do not run us. There are not fiefdoms. There are not individual princes and kings. That is not democracy. That's aristocracy. And there are those who want to drag us back toward that. There's already too much of it as, as it is. Through corporate you know, control of small blocks and things like that, there's already too much consolidation of resource, which is why they have control over these different things. No, I'm a democracist. And anybody else who's a democracist can fight alongside me with Indivisible Houston. Now... With that said, Daniel Cohen, I can't tell you how happy I am to have brought you to the show. Thank you so kindly for coming on. As you can see, folks, he means what he says, but he's not only talking about it, he is doing something about it. 
and join the team wherever you are. If you're in the Houston area, there is uh, Indivisible Houston, and we're having a meeting on Saturday uh, on Sunday. Tell them again about it. Not this Sunday, but tell them about it. Yeah, it's, it's the final Sunday of this month. It's the 24th at St. Stephen's in West Alabama at 2 o'clock. We're talking about fighting the deportation machine. But if there's something that you care about and you want to get involved, particularly if it is congressional or um, political pressure in the Houston area, then we're here to touch base with you and we're here to tie hands and figure out how we can, can fight for a better world. That's really what we're about, no matter what it is. And, and if there's government failure, if there's um, monopolistic takeover of something, that's what we're here to pressure people against. You know, when, when, when we found out that Hurricane Harvey hit and that Harris County had a hurricane plan seven months prior to the storm and did nothing to implement it along the way, we were there 24 hours to make sure that that critique went live and across the world. And we didn't do it because, we, you know, we have it in for, for politicians, although some of them certainly have beckoned it in the past. But that's not why we did it. We did it because we wanted people who were affected by Hurricane Harvey to not be hit 50 times as hard by the next storm. And by the way, hurricane season is here in Houston, Texas, so I'm glad we did. Absolutely so. Daniel Cohen, folks, like as you heard, go find your indivisible in your part of the, if you're in your part of the United States. Go active go do what needs to be done you don't have to be able to articulate as well as uh, our, our our daniel cohen is here because you know what we need folks at all levels working the grassroots daniel cohen thank you so kindly for having been here and i hope to see you again you will you, you know you'll be a regular on this show you've been here two times before and you will be here again thank you so kindly for coming my brother Good to talk to you, and thank you for everything, Egberto, and you know you'll be seeing me. Absolutely so, my brother. Have a good one, okay? I'm going to tie up the show, and then we're going to close this baby out. Folks, thank you so kindly for being a part of Politics the Right. You know this is a progressive show, and we bring you personalities not only from here in Texas, but from all over the country. We brought you the winner in Indiana. We brought you the winner in California. We brought you... There, there's one person that... There's only one person who appeared on our show so far that hadn't won their, their primaries. But you know what? That is for another time. Want to remind you folks that this is a not only a call-in show, 646-716-5812, but a progressive show that needs your support. So please, folks, if you could so kindly go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right and become a subscriber of Politics Done Right. We are We continue to bring you, we continue to bring you not only local news, not only local Texas news, but news in your area. We continue to do what is necessary to keep the progressive movement going. I am not asking you to do things that I don't do. I am a subscriber to the Daily Coast, up at news.com, uh, democraticunderground.com, and many other progressive publications progressives online entities as well as stations it is important kpft.org for which i also have a program there politics and right on kpft we support the only way we can keep our movement going the only way we will succeed is if we don't only listen and agree but we must listen we agree and we get our butts out there and we work just like Daniel Cohen, president of Individual Houston, was saying. We go out there and we do the job. We get the job done. All of us can contribute. We don't have to be out there beating the pavement. You can be making phone calls. You can be writing articles in the newspaper to, to keep our message active, to keep our message fresh. You can be writing blogs. You can be coming on to shows like Politics Done Right. You can host your own show. There's a lot of things people in the progressive movement can do to support the movement. We need financial support. We need voice support. We need foots on the ground. We need everything, everything that you can do to move the progressive movement forward. It has to be done on the grassroots because the plutocracy has no interest, zero interest in you being able to have a true democracy because a true democracy does not warrant their existence in the form that they are today. You are a threat. The only way for us to really have a true democracy is for us to really take over. The only way we can take over is if progressives get their hands on the levers of government 
And the only way we get the, our hands on the levers of government is if we support it in all facets. I ask you to go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right. Become a subscriber. I ask you to go out there and make the phone calls as we've asked to the politicians to tell them support a support immigration reform. We ask you to go ahead and tell them repeal the tax cut. We ask you to go ahead and tell these folks you are going to kick them out of office. For those of you who are in California today, California has a very interesting way that they pick their, their electorate. And that is, it's a, I don't remember what they call it, but it's the first two people that win the election that goes on. So you could have two Democrats running. You could have two Republicans running. You could have a Republican and a Democrat running. We have certain districts in there that we thought were going definitely to the progressive. But because several progressives went into the fold, they have diluted what uh, they have diluted several of the races. Get in there and kind of come together on a particular two people and get those people to run to make sure those are the people who are going to be representing you in the November election. California, it is very important. You are going to lead the nation in the recovery of the House of Representatives. We need you. California, we need you now. Please go ahead. If you're listening to the show, get them to vote. If you're listening to the show, share it to make sure that others see that we have to get out there to vote. So one more pitch, and that is, folks, please go ahead and subscribe to Politics Done Right at Patreon.com. Patreon.com. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Slash politics done right i guarantee you that we do the job we make sure and continue we continue to put the message out we continue to depend on you to get the message prom- promulgated all over the country not only through your not only through your your subscriptions not only through uh, again uh, your 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 listening but listening is not enough we try to activate you we gave you some some work to do today and we try to give you some work to do all of the times, but of course you can always be working to call your particular representative and make sure that they are doing what they have to do. Again, folks, we only came to you one time today. Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. I had a couple of news items inside of our um, blog post for the show. Just want to touch on them. I'm not going to read them because they're fairly long. Uh, the, one of the Koch brothers, because of quote unquote uh, uh, taking care of his health is dropping out of the Koch brothers machine that that thing that funds all these um, I don't want to say evil people but 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 funds evil policies he is no longer going to be with the group but his brother's still there so the evil will continue and uh, there was a second uh, second notice in the in the blog that I can't remember off the top of my head right now that I'm going to pull up as we speak uh, uh, a piece of news that that we want you to to know about and that second piece of news is that uh, oh I, how could i have forgotten that seniors are paying more for drugs they're getting more name brand drugs and they're paying more for it no added value no reason for it but they're just paying more under the trump regime remember he told you all you uh, the elderly that are listening, those of you that are listening, remember what he told you. He said he acknowledged that the drug companies were nothing more than ripoff artists. He acknowledged that the prices were scam prices. He said he would get them down. Instead, they are going up faster than they were before, even as our our people on Medicare are getting less medicine. Folks, you need a change. We have to be the change. We cannot sit back and wait for somebody to do it. We have to decide who's going to be office in the office. We have to decide who we will be supporting in November to ensure that things move forward. Again, please be a subscriber to politicsdoneright.com. Be a subscriber to Politics Done Right. Go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right. Uh, we need you to be a part of it to keep this going. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end the show. You know how I'm going to close this baby out. I am out. <laughs>
I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.